the greatest moment in show business history, Judy, 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 live in person at Carnegie Hall. Am I right? I'm right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode dedicated to my 12 favorite live albums. You know how much I love live albums because it's in the moment. It happens how it happens. If there's a mistake, they have to deal with it. And this is when we differentiate a star from a singer because these women know how to deal with a, a difficult audience. They know how to deal with, with the problems, with, uh, with uh, forgetting their, their, uh, their lines, forgetting the songs, um, the orchestra not working. They just go and speed like a bullet train. And today is no exception with the greatest moment in show business history, Judy Garland, live at Carnegie Hall in person. This is a show like no other, and up to this day, it has been unsurpassed. Now, this is a concert um, that uh, was recorded April 23rd, 1961, one day before Barbara Streisand's birthday, but it's just a coincidence, and it came out July 10th of the same year to rave reviews. It won a Grammy Award for a Best Album of the Year, and it was on the Billboard charts for 70 weeks and 13 consecutive weeks at number one. So it was a huge, huge success for Judy Garland, which everybody adored, everybody rooted for. Um, Judy passed away uh, a very few years later, um, but this was certainly one of the highlights of her non-stop uh, career and uh, it really shows the extraordinary talent, perseverance, humor, um, and every single uh, facet of this fascinating tiny little frame of a woman who is adored and revered by her audience. And I think that this is why on top of how talented Judy is, um, it was such an extraordinary moment because her audience was just clamoring. They got out of this, their seats, they went to the front row, and they were just screaming and yelling, and they just never, ever had enough. And Judy, you know, if you know a little bit about her career, she's had ups and downs, difficulties. She's been put through the mill, uh, as she's been used and abused by the producers, by the moguls at the uh, big studios. She was, uh, you know, she was called by Louis B. Mayer as a child, my little hunchback. I mean, it's just to give you an idea of how poorly they treated her. And let's get right in to this phenomenal concert, and I have to stop talking. Uh, Mort Lindsay was the conductor amazing, amazing 50-piece orchestra. They did not, uh, they were not cheap with that concert. Only Judy, just Judy, Judy, the orchestra. And when I say Judy and the orchestra, it was called in some newspapers a, uh, a fight, a prize fight, a boxing match between the orchestra and between Judy. Now, Mort Lindsay said that he played one, I don't know, what the term is, but just like one faster than it should be. He just sped the orchestra up a, a tiny bit, but uh, that forced Judy to be running after the orchestra and to give much more energy. He just noticed that when he did that, she had something in her voice that she gave that was a little bit more. And so it really is like this from the beginning of the album to the end, uh, except for the slow songs, uh, of course, where you have a feeling she's running after the orchestra. And she's running, but she is winning the sprint. I mean, she is right up there. There is not one note in this entire double album that goes astray. It's everything is perfection. She just sounds like a miracle and it goes up and down, quiet, high, low, screams, yells, everything. And she's always there. 
and the orchestra is so fast at sometimes you think it's like the the thing from the from the looney tunes from the warner brothers you know when they speed up that music it's just that fast in certain songs i'll, I'll point them out so after the magnificent overture she arrives and starts with a rather slow song which is when you're smiling the whole world smiles with you it's a kind of greeting song and then you know it just starts like this she even begins by saying my 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 you know she's overwhelmed she apparently stayed up for two nights um 48 hours straight uh, just to keep the energy level high she didn't sleep and so when she arrived she was kind of you know in a bit of a daze um you must see the uh television uh movie with judy davis um i think it's called my life with judy garland because it's from the point of view of her other daughter um <laughs> i forgot the name I'm so sorry, you know, Liza, you know, the Liza fans, but uh, you know who I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to go check. <laughs> Other daughter, Lorna Luft, of course, and and, and her, and, and Liza, and Judy's uh, other uh, son is Joey Luft. Imagine being Judy Garland's son and Liza Minnelli's brother. <laughs> Anyway, um, so did I even start telling you about these songs? Okay, um, almost like being in love and this can't be love is like a duet. And this is where the concert to me begins because, um, you know, she starts, you know, what a day this has been, what a great mood I'm in. And then she picks up, you know, it's almost like being in love. But then when she goes into this can't be love, you know, it's she, she, ends the song and she goes it's almost it's almost it's this can't be love and you can tell that here the audience says okay we're in for a show and uh, it's just fantastic she quiets down the house with do it again the beautiful song you know i may cry oh 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 but do it again and um and then she gives a few monologues that are all about her um time in Paris. So uh, just before that, she had, uh, since the ninth, uh, in 1959, she had been very, very ill. She had had a, a rest, a vocal rest. She gained a lot of weight and she was very, very sick. And then she, she went back on tour and um, with a, a, a show that was very singular and very particular, it was just Judy. And this is where the Judy Garland uh, stage persona became the legend and so she went all over the world she sang in in a lot of places and when she was in paris um she was adored and she was a big hit but she tells that you know she has a friend who's so chic and who says you have to meet my hairdresser because obviously you need someone and so the hairdresser is alexandre de paris still exists today he's gone but his um hairdressing salon still exists and uh, he says, we're going to change you, complete you completely and make you look like nobody else. You're not going to look like yourself anymore. And she says, well, don't you think a little bit? And um, and so he does this incredible uh, uh, hair piece on her and clips things. And it's all uh, added and spit curls. And then when she sings, she gets hot and the whole uh, hair starts to fall and she looks like a Neanderthal. And so the audience is hysterical. They're in stitches. She's just so funny. And um, and the way she talks, you know, is like going up and down. And it sounds a little bit like this. And she's just so cute. Um, after that, um, she sings, you go to my head. Uh, which is like a bossa nova and she forgets the words and she kind of uh, and she picks them up again and even that is fantastic when you listen to it you say it shouldn't be sung any other way it's just so perfect um, alone together is a very quiet song and it was from her latest album uh, uh, Judy alone with that beautiful album cover which I absolutely love um, who cares putting on the Ritz which she calls a striptease number. How long has this been going on? And Just You and Me, all of these songs, which are 
classics of her repertoire and that you know everybody knows and people just go absolutely crazy she then sings the man that got away one of her huge hits from a star is born and she sings it like no one else uh she then sings san francisco and um, begins a prologue by making fun of Jeanette McDonald, who sang in the ruins of San Francisco in the movie. And it's just so cute and so funny. But when she gets into the song, it's just amazing. You know, she's just so brilliant. Every single note, every single um, uh, piece in that in that album is is absolute perfection um, i can't give you anything by but, but love which i love from the album judy and love beautiful beautiful album and um the way she sings it the there's a beautiful uh, solo trumpet and uh, um uh, maybe a saxophone uh but you know when she says diamond bracelets Woolworth doesn't sell and I'm too broke that I can't give you anything but love and it's also so true because although Judy was up there at Carnegie Hall and a superstar and adored and revered all of her contracts were terrible and uh, there was one contract where apparently she was doing these huge hauls and she was paid ten dollars a night because she had signed them and she didn't pay attention and everything went to this Judy Garland company but that company didn't belong to her so this is why the audience is so so much with her because she's a little bit a little part of us you know we've all God knows, have I been, uh, you know, paid $10 for a show. But, uh, um, uh, you know, this is Judy, you know. So when she's going through this, you know, you feel, you feel for her because she should be a billionaire. And uh, we know that when she passed away, uh, she had a hundred thousand dollars in debt, which is a lot of money for the time. And Liza paid for everything. And um, that's Liza, she's such a star. Um, after that, she sings That's Entertainment, which is truly her life. You know, the, the clown with the pants falling down or um, the dream that's a, a song of romance or the, the scene where the villain is mean. This is what she's been through. She's done all these movies and with Mickey Rooney and of course, um, uh, the, the Wizard of Oz and that. And then, Come Rain or Come Shine, where um, uh, there's a, f a, f a false start. The orchestra starts and then stops, and then it starts again with a drum. And this is um, now can be heard in the final version that came out in 2003 of the Judy Garland concert. An amazing, amazing version, and where you have everything in the right order, and you have all of the monologues, and... Um, um, and the sound is absolutely beautiful and you can hear it on iTunes. So she sings Come Rain or Come Shine. And this is the part where I was telling you the orchestra is mad. I mean, it goes so fast and so high that you cannot imagine. And she is right behind it. And but you can tell that she's really pushing to the limit because she is, I think, so happy at that moment on the stage. Now, of course, she um, did many shows and broke attendance records. After that, she uh, pays tribute to Harold Arlen, who is in the audience, who wrote Come Rain or Come Shine and all of the extraordinary songs, including um, 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 Somewhere Over the Rainbow, of course. And, um, and then she gives a, another monologue about Paris where she says that she changes for the second half into her pantsuit and there was a zipper in the back and the zipper wouldn't stay zipped. So she put a great big safety pin in the back. I love this story because we tend to think that stars wear these gowns that are absolutely perfect and that are, you know, just made out of, like Bob Mackie says, butterfly wings and they hold like steel, but they're made of butterfly wings. And, um, and this is, you know, Judy telling you, well, the zip is broken. And so then she says that 
while she was singing in Paris, uh, the the um, safety pin got undone and went right into her derriere. And so she never sang so high or so fast. And uh, that's how she ends. And every time she ends those monologues, it's like, oh, you know, that's it. And, you know, people are in stitches, but she just goes into another song. It's just like, oh, it's a stupid story. Um, <clears throat> this is a part where she's going to sing all these quiet songs that she sings alone with a piano and she says that very often when she's invited to parties people ask her to sing and uh, this is where she sings you're nearer a foggy day if love were all <clears throat> beautiful beautiful songs and then right away she picks up to the last part of the uh, concert with zing went the strings of my heart beautiful song beautiful orchestration stormy weather a classic again. You made me love you for me and my gal. The trolley songs is a medley from the trolley song is a medley from um, Meet Me in St. Louis. The the the, the movies that she did with uh, Vincent Minnelli and the trolley song is um, as Liza Minnelli explained in one of her concerts uh, when uh, Judy and Vincent Minnelli had that song. They thought it was a bit of a dumb song, you know, ding ding ding. And um, they decided to make it a story and to make it like a cliffhanger. So at the end of the song, you know, when she says, as he started to leave, I grabbed hold of his sleeve with my, with my hand and as if it was planned. And it just goes up and up and up crescendo. And it's so exciting. And even though it's this cute little love story on a trolley with somebody who bumps into a, um, a girl, it turns into this this thing, you know, that you know, we all had, you know, where you meet somebody and you know they're going to go and you have like two seconds or you're never going to see them again. I mean, we all had. I, well, it happened to be once. Um, rock a by Your Baby with a Dixie Melody, one of her classic hits that she sings so beautiful because she does all this Al Jolson type of um, um, uh, singing, you know, the vaudeville, and she was, uh, as she says, born in a trunk, and then Over the Rainbow, which is a first finale where the audience goes absolutely berserk. I mean, you really know that they are never going to let her go. And she does say, we'll be here all night, and, you know, we'll sing all night. And you can tell that she is going to give everything that she has. And um, this is the kind of artist that Judy is. And that's why, again, the greatest moment in show business history, when you have somebody who gives everything that they have um, uh, and just, you know, is made for the stage, even though this business is kind of... Uh, uh, killed her. Um, it, it It's just so touching. And, uh, you know, we are so thankful because, you know, uh, uh, Judy uh, died before I was born. But nevertheless, uh, you know, look at how much I uh, adore her. And, and of course, she left an incredible legacy because she left behind her, her daughter. Uh, the, her daughters and um, so after Over the Rainbow she sings Swanee uh, which is you know the Al Jolson uh, hit from uh, the jazz singer which she sings divinely because at the end she does an absolute imitation of Al Jolson when she gets on the floor and she goes mammy mammy and it's just absolutely riveting she's so extraordinary and then after you've gone and Chicago is the very, very last song of the album. And then you have five minutes of applause and screams and shouts. And I can understand because I would have done the same. So I know this was a long video, but please. Oh, one more thing. This album is one of the 50 recordings chosen by the Library of Congress to be preserved forever. And then they're in a kind of vault where they are hoping that they'll be able to be found. And so I'll see you next week for another live album of one of my favorite stars. See you next Sunday.